Hi, I'm Sheila Rogers, and I have the great fortune of being the Chancellor of the University of Victoria. I'm here in the great indoors with good company, and I'm, I'm really delighted uh, to bring in today's guest. Just before I do, I think about uh, the time that I have spent as a broadcaster. Somebody, uh, it's 40 years at the CBC, by the way, a publicist added a zero, not, uh, not too recently, so it's like 400 years at the CBC, but, but Stacey Ross, anchor at Czech News, 5 o'clock news with Stacey Ross, UVic grad uh, in fine arts, you are appointment viewing for me. The same way The Wire was, When They See Us is. Czech News at Five has just really added so much joy and also great local news uh, during this time of the pandemic, and I'm very grateful. So really oh, lovely to welcome you to this program. Thank you, Sheila. What That's you so doing? nice to hear. You know what? We're making our way through this crazy business as best we can. It's been uh, it's been a challenge. I feel overwhelmingly grateful to have a job that I get to to come to every day, and that my family is safe and healthy. Um, so that being said, I'm doing well. I'm doing so much uh, better than so many folks who are struggling through this right now, and I'm very grateful for that. What kind of challenge has it been to to put together such a high quality newscast over this time? It has been a challenge, mainly because it's kind of a collaborative business, as you know, Sheila. I mean, we, especially here at Czech, we're all together normally in one big newsroom, and it takes so many people to to put our product on the air every evening. And the pandemic has forced us to, to separate, has forced us into isolation. So um, for most of this three months period, I have been in my own little office and Joe Perkins, our six o'clock anchor has been in his office. There's been a smattering of people throughout this big building. And otherwise everybody has been on their own working from home or sometimes working in their trucks with their mobile editing units. So we've been very disconnected. And the biggest challenge for us has been trying to, to stay together and work together as a unit, even though we're not able to be physically together. So it's been a real challenge. And I gotta say, I'm so proud of the team here at Check. I mean, it takes so many of us to put this thing on the air every night and everybody has just worked so hard and been so fluid and so flexible to try and make things work in, in these really, really tough times. So I'm so proud of, of everybody here. I, and, and I think you should be as well. It's, uh, I know what a great effort it is. And uh, I know even with my tiny little radio show, if I didn't have my other two producers, I'd be toast. So <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful, always grateful to have a great crew. One mm -hmm. of the things that I think uh, Czech does so magnificently is to not only build community, but maintain community. And even at a time like this, you have reporters all over Vancouver Island. You raised a boatload of money for relief, pandemic relief. How important as a value is community to you? Oh gosh, it's everything. I mean, really, uh, that is why we're here and it's what we're all about, you know, I mean, our story is an interesting one, of course, 10 years ago or almost 11 years ago now, we, we bought the station, the community, the people that live in the community bought the station and, and kept it on the air and kept it alive. And and in those days, we got so much support when we were struggling and, and we were trying to find our way in this tough uh, TV business. It's the community that carried us through. And anytime we have a chance to help in any way, give back to the community that's so important to us, we do. And you know, I, I think, too, in, in times of trouble, people go to where they're comfortable. You know, Czech has been around for a long, long time, and it's been the go-to station for a lot of people for a long, long time. And that's really important. It's really important for me, and that's one of the big reasons why I come to work every day and why it's so important for everybody at Czech to keep doing their jobs and keep producing the, the quality newscasts that we do. It's just, it's all about community. That's absolutely why we're here. Stacy, just you, you hinted a little bit at how it, 10 years ago you weren't even sure if Czech would be here right now. 
what happened? It all happened in a very short little telescope <laughs> period of time, right? Oh boy, Sheila, it was unbelievable. It's, you know, I was, I was thinking about that a lot as I was thinking about how we're managing through this crisis time and, and uh, we're used to it. You know, it's not the first time we've managed through to get through some kind of crisis here, but it was, um, it was 2009, September 2009, when our owners, Can West Global, decided that they were no longer interested in having uh, us as part of their network tried to find a buyer, couldn't, and uh, they were going to shut shut us down, absolutely, uh, turn us to black, and that would be the end of historic Czech television um, in a very, very short period of time. I mean, we're talking a matter of hours. Um, some visionaries came up with an idea. We're talking about uh, Rob Germain, who was our general manager now, who was the news director then, and um, the Samson family, Levi Samson at Harmac and Nanaimo, and other people, they really believed that we as employees could buy the station and make a success of it. Within about 48 hours, they got all the employees on board. We as employees, we cashed in our RSPs, we borrowed money from our families, we came up with the money to buy the station. And it was a matter of hours before that switch was going to be pulled to uh, to send us into black that we managed to, to, to make a deal with Can West Global. And here we are almost 11 years later. And you really literally invested in it. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's still part of our uh, of our agreement that every employee that works at check must must buy shares in the company. The uh, the monetary value of those shares, the requirement has has come down over the years as we've needed less investment from our employees. But we still it's part of our philosophy that everybody who works here is is a, an employee owner of check. Stacy, you are a graduate in fine arts from the University of Victoria mm -hmm. as an anchor. And, and what you do at Czech, how much do you draw on what you learned at UVic and your time at UVic? Whew, uh, so much. Um, I went to UVic as a mature student. I had already been to college and uh, had worked in television for a few years before I went back to university. But uh, my experience at UVic, what I learned uh, in getting my fine arts degree there really is how I, I got this job. It really taught me so much about um, about myself and my body and the tools I, I use to communicate. Um, it's not, you know, not just my voice, it, but nonverbal communication is so important as well. And, and learning um, how to use the tool, the tools that I have to, to communicate, uh, that's what I, I honed. And those are the skills that I, that I draw on a lot. Um, and talking to people and reading people and, and reading the, the way other people communicate, I think, too. You know, I mean, that's a big part of, of theater is using your body and reading signals and reacting to people. So um, it was really, really valuable. And I loved my time there. I really did. I always love this time of year because normally it's convocation and a big ceremony at Farquhar Hall. And you come to represent the alumni of the University of Victoria and you give a splendid address to the, the graduating students. You turn around from the audience and you speak right to them. What is it you would like them to know if they happen to be watching this year's graduates uh, about how they'll look back on the university. Well, first, I'd just like to say that my heart hurts at not being able to be at a, a, a true convocation this year for all those who look forward to it so much. And the idea of walking across that stage carries them through some hard times. And mm -hmm. I know that, that that happens for some people. I guess what I'd like the grads to remember about their time there is is how precious a time it is. I mean, as you get older, you have a different perspective on things and, and you get busier too. And I, I think one of the things I'm most appreciative about my time there is that it, it gives you the freedom and the luxury of thinking and learning. And that's something that's that's harder as you get out into the world, I think, and get busier with your kids and your jobs and, and everything else. So I guess I would just look back and I would encourage them to stay connected with each other, connected with the university, and, and to, to go back and visit and stay in touch with the people that, that you were with during your time there, and just appreciate it and appreciate it for the luxury it gave you to, to learn more about yourself in the world. 
you've done such a wonderful job of staying in touch with the university and speaking on behalf of the university because I still can, I think, for about another year. <laughs> we're, we're so very <laughs> grateful. Uh, mm -hmm. And I just wanted to say in that footage, that's not me in the purple, that's former Chancellor Murray Farmer. But uh, it is a wonderful time. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, <laughs> just in case anyone was confused. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh <my. laughs> Chancellor Emeritus Murray Farmer. Um, I I feel, you know, like you. I I really feel uh, sad that we can't bring everybody together. Convocation literally means to call together. Uh, this particular year, we are giving our graduates the option of a grad box, which will have their parchment, uh, the mortar and tassel the alumni pin, uh, because when they walk across that stage, they become UVic alumni. And uh, also the option of attending an in-person convocation sometime within the next three years. And, you know, all my crossables are crossed, Stace, that there will Absolutely. be an opportunity within the next three years. Yeah. Oh, Sheila, really you know, I love convocations. So. I love convocations so much, and, and my favorite part is watching some of the students as they cross the stage, particularly the mature students, maybe because I was one when I was there, mm -hmm. but the mature mm -hmm. students who walk in, you hear from the crowd, you hear the audience members goes, Mom, you did it. Oh. Way to go, Mom. And, and you know what? I get I get teary and emotional <laughs> when I just even think about it. Yeah. And watching their faces as they walk across that stage and and uh, it just it, it's just so emotional, and it just it affects me every time, every single time I do it. Yeah, me too. I, I think I've um, I, I have actually presided over about 70 odd convocation <laughs> ceremonies wow. now. It might be more than that. But I the same feeling. And uh, I know at some universities they say, you know, please hold your applause until everybody has crossed the stage. I actually want to say, if you want to yell and scream and jump up and down and really celebrate your graduate, you go right ahead. And then, the, of course, there are the ceremonies where I don't need to say that because people do. <laughs> That's my mother. That's my brother. I know, I love it. Or, I love it. or the I love the about time. Uh, <laughs> people, the uh, parents uh, who are saying that. Totally, it's it's really you know, great. Oh my gosh, you know what, Sheila, I think that that is one of the hardest things about the current situation now is all the things yeah. like convocation, like the graduation ceremonies for the grade 12 high school students. It's right. it's losing those things that, that are irreplaceable, and like especially for young people because yeah. their their sense of time is different, you know? Like, so for, for a grade 12 student, you say, yeah, this is, you know, it, this is a, a big deal for, for me if I'm 50, but you know what, for a grade 12 student, like that's everything. Those moments that they've had to give up, during this thing are just momentous. And I just, I, I think it's so hard. I've got a 12 year old daughter at home and the hardest thing mm. for me dealing with this is trying to carry her through this um, in, in some kind of, of mental healthy, uh, in, a, in a way that she can stay mentally healthy because of all the things that she's grieving the loss of, you know, the dance recitals, the, yeah. the softball season, all those things that the kids are so looking forward to that, that are, are simply gone. And uh, it's just devastating for them. So. It's a tough one. It's it's that's the toughest part, and and the UVic convocation as well is something I know I know that that uh, is really really devastating to lose for many many graduates, and I'm so sorry about that. I'm really sorry about it too. Um, I do have to say though, one of the things that has absolutely amazed me is how creative uh, our students are, and and the the grade twelve students that you have been presenting on Czech News. Uh, innovative, getting in touch via Zoom calls, and um, and singing and greeting each other. I mean, I would never have thought of that. They're just brilliant. No. They they're really using the technology, milking every drop out of it. <laughs> yes, they sure are. You know, it um, it always amazes me how truly resilient human beings are. You know, I mean, these are such tough times, and yet. So many folks are finding ways to to celebrate and join together and and you know the segment that we love on our Czech news uh, these days is the upside and people really are embracing the upside of things, trying to look at the positive and 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 get through this the best way they can and and the kids too you know I mean they have so much 
reason to be to be down and upset and, and depressed. But you know what? A lot of them aren't. They're shining and they're they're seemingly thriving. I don't know how they're doing it, but they really, really seem to be coming through it the best way they can, many of them. And it's just heartening to see it. It really is. I think part of that is youth. I'm just going to hazard a guess. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> but yeah, but I think, you know, um, I got a note this morning from uh, uh, a woman named Anne Mann, and she's the, she's the chancellor of the University of Manitoba. And she was saying, you know, what were you going to say this year? And I, I thought, well, you know, I really love the idea of essential service, like what's essential and what is a service. And she wrote back and said, I'm going to say hope is a duty. And that's a quote, and I don't know who it's from. But I think we've got to have hope, and, and that will help to get us through. I find wow. a lot of hope uh, in, in the inspiring people that you present that are presented on the upside as well. Some of the <laughs> wackiest people I've ever met too. But, uh, right. But uh, I, uh, yeah, and, and, and you know, thank you for keeping us uh, abreast of everything we really need to know to get through where we're at in the province, uh, what the statistics are, what the stories are. And, and offering that hope all within an hour, you and, and Joe Perkins. It's, uh, well, it's really thank great. Well, thank you. Thank you. We, um, we try really hard to, to, to create this balance, to strike this balance in our newscast, because we know that people uh, need to know what's happening and they, and they want to know what's happening. And, and, um, but we really try and temper the, the terrible series of events that have really you know, done their best to knock us down, I tell you. Um, but yeah. we try to balance that with some fun too. And, and by highlighting those great people and the great wacky things that are that are going on. So I think we've done a good job with it. And I hope we can carry this on in some way, even once we get back to sort of normal. Whatever that is, whatever that's whatever going to be, that is. right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Stacy, great to see you. I can't wait until we can be together on the stage at the Farquhar and really celebrating our students at the University of Victoria. But in the meantime, thank you so much for today. Great to talk to you. Oh, you too, Sheila. I can't wait to see you again as well. All the best. My guest today on Good Company, my good company today was Stacy Ross, University of Victoria graduate, a great and active member of uh, the alumni. I thank you so much for watching. And if you are a graduate this year at the University of Victoria, on behalf of Stacy and myself, we wish you all the best. And uh, I know you're going to do marvelous things. Thanks for watching. All the best and be well.